In this video, we're going to create our first Ruby on Rails application in Cloud9. There are a few things that we need to do to set up the environment to make sure that uh, we are, for one, using uh, Ruby version 5, um, or sorry, Rails version 5, uh, and, uh, and some other things that we'll want to do in order to use the Postgres uh, database as our um, as our primary storage uh, component. So I'm going to run through at least part of setting up an application. We'll we'll uh, um, update Rails. We'll create the app, um, set up the database, and then run the server. Um, make sure that everything is is working. In future lectures, uh, we're going to integrate Bootstrap. Um, and then down the road, start using uh, things like Angular JS. But for now, uh, uh, let's get this environment set up so that we're ready to go. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to ensure that um, we have the proper version of Rails. And if we've created a Cloud9 environment, uh, a workspace, um, then um, probably you're running Rails version 4. Um, so a couple of things here. Um, if you want to know whether or not, first of all, that you have Rails installed altogether. Now, if you created this workspace in Cloud9, then you were able to, to select that as the template for the, um, uh, for the workspace. But you can also do things like type which and then the name and to see which, uh, which version you're running. Although uh, uh, this shows... Um, that we're running Ruby 2.3, but we want to know which version of Rails we're running. So you can type Rails-V, uh, and that'll show us here that we're we're running uh, Rails 4.2.5. So we actually want to update this to Rails version 5, and so we're going to do this by running a gem install Rails. And so this is going to upgrade us to version uh, version five, and this will take um, uh, just a few seconds, really, to to get that uh, up and running. Um, and so now, if we type, uh, let me just clear the screen. Now, if I type um, Rails V. You'll see here that we're running uh, Rails version 5, which is what we want. Um, now, the, um, uh, the first thing, the next thing that we want to do is create our first, uh, first app um, with, uh, with Rails. And so I'm going to call, I'm going to use Rails new. Uh, and the syntax for this is give the name of the project that you want to create. Uh, now, there are a couple of things that I want to omit from um, our new application, so I'm going to use the skip uh, and then turbo links. It's one of the things I want to skip. Um, turbo links and, um, um, and Angular JS don't really play nicely together, um, and so we're going to leave turbo links out. Uh, the other thing I want to do is exclude Spring, which we won't actually ever talk about again. Um, but um, it's just an unnecessary addition to the environment, so we don't really need it. And the other thing I'm going to do is to make this thing go faster. I'm going to skip um, adding any of the test harness um, uh, capabilities. So um, um, you know, we're going to use uh, we're going to use R spec um, probably later, and so there's no need for me to to include it here in the environment. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, specify that I want to use Postgres um, uh, as our database, and so I'm going to say dash D, which specifies which database, and then Postgres SQL. If you leave it out. I believe that uh, MySQL, no, no, uh, uh, there's a different one. Um, uh, SQLite is the is the default, um, but we're going to use Postgres this semester, so I'm going to put this in here and go ahead and run that. 
And this is going to create um, our directory, add in all of the stuff uh, that we need um, uh, for, for application. Uh, this will take uh, a few seconds uh, to get all of that in place. Um, so we'll just have to uh, wait for that a moment. Um, and then as that is uh, executing, there's a couple of things I want to mention. So in the next step, we're going to create a database um, for, uh, for our project. And, um, and so uh, there's a couple of things that are going to need to happen there. We're going to have to make some modifications to the Postgres um, database. And so we'll see that. And there's also a link that I'm going to give to you. Um, that uh, will indicate how to do that while you're cr um, creating your own application for uh, for the project. Uh, in particular, there is a um, um, there's a web page on Stack Overflow that I wanted to mention. That I'll have a link for this up online. But we're going to need to do this uh, this here. The when we try to create our database. Um, using um, the database as it is, as we create our application, uh, we're going to end up having a conflict between the uh, type of encoding for the data, and so we're going to want to change that. Um, seems like we're still going here. Okay, so uh, we've got the, the application all created, and actually now, um, if I do an ls, you'll see that I've got a new directory here called demo. It also appeared up here in the navigation while um, I was creating that, and so this is our this is our application for the project. And I'm going to change directory into that, um, and then go on to the next step of creating um, our uh, uh, and setting up our database. So first of all, let me uh, let me do something here, just kind of show you that uh, that problem that I was just mentioning. Um, first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a user within the uh, um, within the um, uh, within Postgres. I want to uh, add a user that uh, we'll be using for for all these demos. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to say well uh, as we create this user, um, let's also um, log in. I'm going to give it a name. Uh, with dash p, I'm going to basically say that uh, I want to set my password um, as well. The login switch uh, will allow the user to log into the database uh, uh, whenever uh, we want to do any type of administration. Uh, the create uh, db uh, flag tells Postgres that uh, that the user should be able to or is authorized to create databases. Um, and then finally, demo. This is the name of the user that we're creating. So. I'm going to uh, I'm going to do this. Uh, what we're going to find is that actually I, uh, one of the steps that I need to do is I actually need to start the server, the, the database server. So I'm going to do this in a new terminal. I can either create one. There was one that was already there, but I can start up a new terminal. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Um, and I'm going to start. Postgres SQL database server with sudo service Postgres SQL start. So start that up. That'll just take a moment, um, and then I, I should be able to run that command. So let me do that. Okay, and then the password. Um, I'm just going to give it a dummy. Pa well, just a demo is a is a password. Um, And we'll use that for for all of our examples. Okay, so uh, so that's created. Now there's another thing that I need to do in order to set this up. I need to make a modification to a file called um, it's under config called database.yml here. So I need to add some things to this. Uh, uh, to this definition of default. So um, I'm going to indicate that the database is going to be running on our local host um, rather than some other data, um, some other server. Um, so it knows where to look. 
I'm going to give the username, which is demo, as well as password. Um, and then I think that's everything that I need. A um, couple things here to notice is that uh, uh, there's a development uh, version database that actually ended up being um, created or was created when we um, started everything up. Uh, and then there's also a test database, there's also a production database that uh, as we move through different phases of our development um, that we'll be able to use. But for now, um, uh, as our default, uh, we're using demo development as our, as our database um, as defined by default here with the username and password of demo. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Um, and then the, the last step Actually, the, the other step is I need to, I need to do this, this uh, uh, the stuff that's on the Stack Overflow page. And actually, let me show you what happens when I don't do that. So the next step would be for us to, um, to create, um, uh, create a database. So exec. Create. And so I'm going to try to do this. Um, uh, and essentially, I'm creating a, the database for the uh, for the project. And when I do that, I'm going to get this error. I'll come up here in a second. Um, and the the thing that we really want to look at is actually I just saw it there, but it's also here at the at the very top. Um, so new encoding UTF-8 is incompatible with the encoding of the template database SQL ASCII. So um, we obviously want to fix this in order to be able to use the UTF-8 encoding, which is, uh, um, is desirable in this case. Actually, in most cases. So I, I need to follow the, the things that are described here. So let me, let me do this. I'm going to drag this off screen. Um, and I'm going to essentially do all the things that are in that uh, on that page. So first thing I need to do, uh, let me clear the screen. Uh, first thing I need to do is start up um, uh, the Postgres SQL database. So I'll do that with PSQL. And then I'm going to use those commands. So it's update pg database set. And actually, one of the things I'm going to do here, I'm just, I'm going to type in this first one. I'm going to cut and paste after this, um, so that you don't have to suffer through me typing through all of that. So the first thing that's happening is that uh, we're setting the um, uh, the template one uh, database um, um, so that we'll be able to drop it. If I just tried to drop drop the table, <clears throat> um, I wouldn't be able to um, because of uh, one of because of this uh, uh, this template attribute. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, change that. Um, um, and so I've done that uh, so that it is no longer a template. I'm going to go ahead and drop the table. Uh, but then I'm going to create a new um, a new database. Um, so that uh, it uses the Unicode um, encoding. And the next thing is I'm going to set this up as a template that we can then use for, um, for our project. And then uh, I'm going to switch to that new database. And then I'm going to freeze it so that we don't make any changes later. Unless we really need to, but we're not going to need to here. All right, so um, that should do it. And so now that I'm done with that, I can run that command again, um, which was to do the create. Um, and what will happen here is that um, 
will now accept uh, that encoding that we wanted to use, the ETF en encoding, which is, okay, there it is. It's created now the two databases that I mentioned here, the development database and the test database. Did not create the production one. Um, I guess that's actually using the same, uh, same as default. And then the other thing is, Go ahead and migrate the database so that we're ready to use it for uh, for the project. All right, so there's that. All right, now so if everything is working the way that we hope, um, we should be able to actually run um, our rail server and. Uh, and then see the application up and running. So I'm going to do that. Uh, and so I'm going to do a bundle sec rail server. Um, we don't actually need all of this all the time, but it's kind of this practice of, of running <coughs> uh, uh, Rails is to bundle everything first, make sure that all the packages, all the gems are, are, are clean, and then go ahead and run it. We do need to do this this other part here for running on Cloud9 um, to indicate that we want to use the base uh, IP address and then on the allowable ports for, uh, for Cloud9. So that's what I've done here with, uh, with this command. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And so now the server is up and running. It's running at port 8080. Um, I can do two things. I can uh, I can click on this link and it'll bring it up in our browser. So I'll just go ahead and open it. And there it is. Yay, you're on Rails. The other way I could start this obviously is to just go straight to that URL. Um, I could actually go straight to CSC 3100-star-jganod. Actually, not Jaganod, but Prokhanod. And that. And it should be bring up the same, um, that same page. So there it is, running on Rails 5, Ruby version 2.3. So, all right, looks like everything's good. So, um, yeah, that uh, that's that's what we need to do to get everything started for um, for creating a Ruby on Rails application using uh, Rails version 5 um, and Postgres. So that concludes this video.